It's me, Dominic. I'm a friend of Pete's. Is he all right? He's come down with fever. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I hope it isn't influenza. No, he's asleep or I'd let you in. Uh, well, sure. Uh, I just came by for a visit and... Uh, oh, and to return these books that he lent me. Oh, thanks. My name is Dominic Bertino. Yeah, I heard you yelling. <laughs> I'm Lily. Pleased to meet you, Lily. Uh, you a relation of Pete's? Uh, no. Uh, my mother and him were friends many years ago, and uh, when my mother died, he, he took care of me. That sounds like Pete. Yeah. I've been here a few times before. It's a good thing I came now. He's very feverish, you know. Oh, you better get back to him. Uh, just tell him Dominic says hello. Okay. Bye. Bye. Nothing to worry about. Let's get packed. We've got a long ride to the border. Where are you coming from? Denman Valley. North end or south? North. Foothills. You'll both have to be checked by the doctor. We've had many cases of influenza in that area. And I can't let you into the U.S. unless we're sure you've both been checked and you ain't got it. Impossible. We've got a dead man in a coffin. You're French. And if she don't talk like Marie. They're still in Canada. I'll handle this. Excuse me for the delay, Mrs. Oh. Miss uh, Lily Garneau. This is my driver, Ted Maddox. Well, if, uh, if you and your driver will follow me, I'll get your wagon settled in the livery stable and we'll find you both a place to sleep. Sleep? We're not staying overnight here. I'm afraid so, ma'am. And that body you got in the coffin there have to be checked out as well. Look, uh, we're just going a couple of miles into Montana to bury the guy. We'll try to make your stay here as pleasant as possible. You'll both follow me. Anything I can do to make your stay more enjoyable, ma'am, you let me know. Bring it up. Besides, my place looks like a home. It's like my nest. Yours looks like a cemetery. <laughs> your place still smells of that skunk that died and you never found. That was a raccoon and the dogs took it away, all right? And you've got mice and spiders and your roof leaks. Mm. And you still ain't caught that uh, snake. I did, too, get that snake. I left it to control the mice, all right? And who asked you anyway, Jake? 
Do you thoroughly understand why we're having this problem? Oh, I see. You're going to give me another one of those lectures of yours, I suppose. Do you know why we're having this argument? Jake, you know what the problem is with most Canadians like Red Chest here? Sure. It's as plain the as... The problem is that most Canadians think they understand what the problem is. Think? But they don't. That's the problem. The problem is that you're angry because every time a young lady comes into town, she favors me instead of you. I can settle this. Easy. Let the lady choose. You went to a Catholic school? Mm -hmm. So did I. My favorite nun was Sister Gabrielle. Mine was Sister Ellen. <laughs> then my mother pulled me out of school and we went touring the world with a circus. Mm. I studied to be a nurse, but then I fell in love with Jacques. Oh, but where is he? I want to meet him. He died here almost two years ago. I'm sorry, but they call you Dr. Dumont. Uh, before he died, I helped him with everything, from setting bones to gunshot wounds to delivering babies. After he died, the sick people kept on coming, so I read his medical books and I treated them. And you, Lily? How did you end up on the road that runs past my house with a dead man in a casket? Well, we left the circus in Montreal and uh, my mother met an artist and married him. By Dr. then... Dumont, better come take a look at Melissa. I'll be right there. I would invite you to stay here with me, but I'm filled up with patients and their families. Oh, I understand. I'm sure Clive and Jack will find you a place to stay. Jack and Clive? The Mountie and the Marshal. You're both very gallant to offer me your living quarters, gentlemen. Your cabin sounds delightful, Marshal, but, uh... You know, I'm so tired from this trip, I don't think I could take more than a few steps before I just collapse. Good. Then uh, you'll stay in my quarters. I'll sleep at the office. And in the morning, it'll be my pleasure to take you to breakfast at the hotel. Well, you do understand, don't you, Marshal? Oh, yes, ma'am. I understand. Well, uh, Miss Garneau, if you'll follow me, I'll show you where everything is. Clive, the death certificate is on your desk. Influenza. Thanks, Marie. Should I be jealous? <laughs> of course not, Marie. Do you know how long it's been since either of you has taken me to breakfast at the hotel? Well, you know, I was saying that exact same thing to Clive this morning. I said, I'm gonna take Marie to breakfast tomorrow. That's what I told Clive. And uh, I aim to do so, ma'am, if uh, <clears throat> you do me the honor. How come you and him are friends? I gave him food and a place to sleep when he was broke. That was about three, four years ago. Ever since then, after he came back from prospecting, he got... Evening, ma'am. He'd come by, or I'd go visit him, and... Evening, you know, gentlemen. Marshal? Uh, is the Mountie in the office? How should I know? I ain't my brother's keeper. He's got a letter from the dead man. What are you talking about? Pete Weber. The man in the coffin that came into town today. Yeah, yeah, old Pete, what about him? Pete Weber was a friend of mine. He gave me this letter, which he said I should open after he died. Well, open it. Uh, I thought I should give this to the Mountie, uh, because Pete was Canadian. No, just open it, will you? What are you waiting for? Well? 
I can't believe it. He left me all his books. And half his gold. The rest goes to his Indian friends. What gold? He's got it buried under the floor of his cabin. Ten sacks of gold dust, he says. That's a lot of... Worth a lot of money, isn't it? Listen, Dom, tomorrow morning, early, you and me are going to take a little ride out to old Pete's place. Sure, but that's in Canada, Marshal. You heard me, Dom. Tomorrow morning, early. I see you got your hair slicked down with bear dreams, Marshal. Who's the lady that got you to shave, Marshal? There's the gold dust, but someone beat you to it, Don. Are you sure you're not simply jealous? Look, Marie, the point ain't that Bennett's taking this girl out for dinner. No. What then? The point is that she and that feller Maddox could have murdered old Pete Stolen his gold, and now... And what? Besides, why would they have come to town? It's simple. It's the main route through the mountains. Uh-oh. Besides which, they didn't even know there was an epidemic, now did they? You forget one thing. I examined old Pete, and he definitely died from influenza. So he was not murdered. Jack, forget it. No, no, I insist that you take it. It looks so lovely on you. Oh, but I don't know when I can repay you. We French girls must stick together. Besides, there's no one else who could wear such a creation. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh, it's so good to laugh. These last few days with the epidemic... Oh, you be... must be exhausted. I know. Yes, and now I must go back and check on my patients. Oh, okay. No, no, please. Accept it as a gift from me. Oh, I shall wear it to dinner with a corporal. Yeah. Last three wagons that came into town were free of infection. Looks like the epidemic might be slowing down. Good. You know where Lily and that man should come with are? Why? Well, I just came from old Pete's cabin and, uh... What is it? What's wrong? A mouse in the corner ran over my shoe. Thought the snakes would take care of them, ma'am. I'm awful sorry I didn't mean... Snakes! No! Snakes, sure. Better it always keeps snakes to control the mice and, and the vermin and the rats. Don't listen to him, Lily. Really, the mice, they're harmless. Uh, oh... Thank you, Clive. I'm sorry to be so foolish. No, no, not at all. <laughs> what are you thinking? How much I was going to miss this wild west. Why don't you stay then? <laughs> what would I do here? Well, uh, you like to read. You could uh, be a school teacher. <laughs> Before I forget, I must give this back to you. It was a wonderful story. No, please keep it, Lily. I wish you'd reconsider about leaving. I know there's not much here in Bordertown for you, but I've enjoyed the time. I sleep on it, Clive. You know, I think Pete wouldn't mind being buried here in Bordertown. Well, that would be wonderful. Well, I must get my beauty sleep. <clears throat> Good night. A teacher, huh? Miss Lily Garneau. Do you know that eavesdropping is the most despicable activity? 
And hey, I... shut up and listen, Corporal. Old Pete's cabin's been ransacked. They could have gotten far. We'll just have to check all the... You're not listening. Nothing's been taken. No pots, no pans, blankets, nothing. Except what was hidden under the floorboards. The thieves. Or thieves. They must have known what they were looking for. Oh, yeah. Gold. Pete had gold hidden in that cabin. And maybe we should just ask Miss Lily Garneau. She knows something about it. What are you implying? Don't be ridiculous. Last one. I'll hide them in the barn. Don't be silly. This is the first place we'll look. Yeah? Well, I don't like the idea of you and all that gold. Just bring me the saddlebags. Once we bury old Pete, we get out of his place. What about the Mountie? Leave him to me. Lily? Evening, ma'am. Marsha wants to ask you something. What is it, gentlemen? I was just paying my last respects to Pete. Do you know anything about some gold that old Pete had hidden in his cabin, ma'am? Pete's cabin was ransacked, and the uh, marshal seems to think that some gold was taken. Pete never said anything. Oh, you don't think I... How could you? I know that. Which way? Something else. I found gold dust in the bottom of Pete's coffin. Well, you're a Texas Ranger. Start tracking. That way. Turned off here. Let's go. I don't get it. Why would you take Bennett's books? Where's the gold? I don't know anything about any gold. Maddox forced me to go with him. He said it, it'd destroy my life if I stayed here. And I wanted something to remember Clive. Well, ain't that sweet. No evidence, 
have no case. Clive? Why'd you run away, Lily? I could have taken care of Maddox. I was afraid. I'd like to rest now. Looking for this, Lily? Come with me, Clive. There's enough for both of us. It's over, Lily. This doesn't belong to you. Give me the gold. I don't want to shoot you, Clive. Somehow, I don't think you will, Lily. Morning, Marie. Morning, Marie. Boy, you look breathtakingly beautiful this morning, Marie. Marie, you look prettier than a lone star in a Texas sky. 